Hello there. Do you know who I am? I've come to London's Science Museum as part of a series of Guardian films looking at the rise of robots and the future of artificial intelligence. From mechanical arms capable of working with surgical precision to social robots with a moral conscience, let's take a look at what the future of humanoids holds. And you're greeted with possibly the most shocking robot of the lot. This incredibly lifelike, squirming, twitching little baby nailed to the wall. Quite a way to make an entrance. So where, where do you see the future of robotics going? I mean, are they going to be taking all our jobs, as some people fear? What we really want visitors to do is to stand in front of these robots, watch them in action, and ask themselves, are robots going to march into our world and demand jobs from us, or are human beings, capitalists, going to award jobs to them because it's the cheaper and easier thing to do? So who is this little creature and what, what does he do? Now is a small social robot that's produced by SoftBank Robotics. It was launched in 2006 and it's also the widest used humanoid robot platform in the world. So does he have any level of artificial intelligence? Can he understand what you're saying and kind of process thoughts and ideas? So it's quite a sophisticated robot in that it can recognize voice commands, it can take in visual recognition cues, such as if it sees a face, it can trigger a behavior. But what it can do is only really limited by what you can program it to do. I like to think of now a little bit as an, an iPhone. It's, it's a platform, and if you're ingenious enough to create the apps you want for it, that's, that's the limits that you have with okay. the robot. And does he have some kind of moral conscience as well? Well, the question we actually ask with this display is whether or not robots need a conscience. If two robots are walking towards a hall and the robot has to decide which to save first, what kind of decision does it make? Effectively, it makes a very practical one in that it calculates which robot's going to reach the hall first and it runs over to save them. But if both robots are going to reach the hall at the same time, it, it just doesn't know what to do. And, and then, then both, both robots die. <laughs> both robots perish. There's something that happens in a split second inside a human brain that robots aren't capable of, and maybe they should be. Really creepy. So who is Casper? Casper is one of the earliest social robots that was developed specifically to work with children with an autism spectrum condition. They're quite terrifying faces to me. How, how would this help an autistic child? Children with autism can often feel overwhelmed by the amount of social cues that we bombard them with. And because of that, they trust the robot much more than they would a stranger that walks into a room with them. It's not meant to take the place of a human therapist in a play session with a child. It's just meant to help break the ice. Hey. Hi, sir. Hello, Hi. Reem. How are you? I'm very well. How are you doing? It's ignoring me. I'm happy to help. So, Inka was a robot receptionist that worked at King's College London for okay. 10 years before it was decommissioned. The nearest toilets are past the exit. She has beautiful eyelashes. So in theory, she can spot you and move her eyes to, mm -hmm. to lock onto you. Yeah, so she if looks for her faces I'd and colors. Them right now. So who is this slightly sinister twitching lady that we've come to meet? Kodomaroid was the world's first robot newscaster. Uh, it was launched in 2014. And at the time, it was the world's most realistic android in, in existence. Is there a danger when these robots you know, look very human but can't actually behave in a very human way, you know, when they kind of cross the, the uncanny valley? Yes, down the line, when we get to a point where we're capable of creating hyper-realistic robots that are indistinguishable, there is a real uh, issue of deception um, that would arise then, but we're not there yet. You can always unplug them, and they seem to be quite unreliable from, yeah, from what we've seen. I'm lost for words. 